this FFE driver. So here's there's a TA right there, right? And so me, truck next to me, we're all sitting right here. So if y'all can see that. He pulls his truck up because there's a a, a, a KFC or a Popeye's chicken. I, either, now he might have to go to the bathroom, but there is a fuel aisle. You go pull into the fuel aisle and then go be right next to the door. Instead, he parks in front of us, so none of us that pull forward, because this is how the parking is here, can pull it. So he's blocking two, four, probably about six to eight trucks. Because he, I guess, I'm hoping that he just really, really had to go to the bathroom real bad. But if you do, you still should be able to get around to the fuel aisle, which, by the way, is just over there. Okay? So, instead, he pulls up. Now, if he come out with some chicken, I'm going to be hot, y'all. I'm going to be hot because it's crazy as hell. I'll let y'all know in a minute. And he came out with the chicken, y'all. Getting back in the truck. Y'all see the ch Child, I ain't got no words. I thought the brother had to go to the bathroom. Park the truck to get some chicken. Blocking everybody else. Crazy as hell. All right, people. I cut the hair again. I'm just letting it do what it's do right now until I get back home. I'm going to be out for maybe two or three more weeks and then I'm going home. Alright, um, I'm going to do some shout outs and I'm actually going to blend the uh, Trucker for One One video I did. Maybe a little bit of ramble on this. Uh, Daily Grind, I'm going to do some my shout outs. Daily Grind, I want to thank you for uh, either commenting or joining the channel. So this is about commenting or joining. Uh, 45 aka 45, it's like I ain't playing. Uh, thank you for joining the channel chuckerette just hey shout out girl have uh, thanks for commenting and uh yeah no i don't think i want to be in the office at our company no i don't it's kind of scary right now um sean glovetsky and i apologize if i mispronounced the name thank you for commenting or subscribing md same thing to you debbie davis same thing to you thanks for joining and commenting Dan Weatherington, uh, you commented on the per diem. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand per diem. It is confusing, but my way of looking at per diem is quite simple. If I didn't give you permission to take it out my check and it's not the standard government stuff, then don't do it. <laughs> if somebody else wants to sign up for that, then let them. But, yeah, it makes no sense. Uh, Dominic Alexander, uh, you did a comment. Thank you for commenting. Lana Bolo, thank you. Katie Thomas, Maya B, I think I mentioned you before. Clouds 543, I thought I mentioned you before. Nino the Savage, thank you for joining me on Facebook. I got you and I've actually went ahead and accepted your friend request. I got somebody named James Brown. Okay, I was never a James Brown song fan or entertaining fan. I mean, he could dance, but it wasn't my thing, but I didn't like his voice. But James Brown, thank you for joining, sir. You got the same name as somebody famous. Dustin Quinn, brother, yeah, I'll look. Um... I haven't looked at your Pam comment. I'll have to go and research that. Let me try it out. We'll just hang it out, y'all. I'll have to research the Pam comment. I, I don't know what's going on with Pam. I'll go look at it. And then, yeah, I can do a video on it and talk about it. I'm actually going to also do a video on some investing software. Uh, I've been posting stuff on investment stuff on the uh, Trucker 411 channel. And um, one of the truckers on there, Cindy, she made, one of our, uh, our members, she made a comment that, she had looked at one, I think it was an acorn one, and that it was not a good, the fees were very high, so you wouldn't really make money. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm going to check it out, and I had a couple other ones I wanted to look at too. Um, my truck is reaching in, y'all, so I apologize for the shaking and for the noise. I had to pull over because it gave me the thing, and it wasn't going off, so I went and parked and tinkled and then set the reach in, so I'm waiting for it to finish. Kid Danger 11, I think I mentioned you before. Uh, Liana. 0454, 0545, I think I mentioned you before, thank you. Ahmed Latif, Peaceful Journey, always, you commented about his innate DNA and it ain't going to change, basically, that everything is corrupt and crazy. Uh, Lance Truck, thank you for commenting as usual. Uncommon 357, thank you for commenting. All right, y'all. So the video that I'm going to be putting up after this has to do with uh, get off the truck. I'm going to just blend it in here. Y'all, forgive me, I'm trying to put my thing up here. I had to go get fuel. I'm heading to Virginia uh, to drop this load. It's due tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm only seven hours from there, so I'll be there sometime tonight. Uh, what I want to tell y'all. I uh, did a 34-hour reset here in Jefferson, Ohio, which I didn't know there was a... I guess I didn't know, and I stayed in the truck because I was working on stuff in the truck, cleaning and organizing, and I did laundry right before I did the 34-hour reset. So I was putting the laundry up, and I'm kind of cleaning up, packing up stuff, too. 
Um, you'll see the video I did, and uh, I'm just probably just rambles right now. Uh, a lot going on. Y'all know about the bombing to the synagogue, which is just insanity. Um, the pipe bombs, that's more insanity. You know, it's funny because I was listening. I was, I was, uh, that video by, oh, what's the Bambino or whatever called This Is America. If y'all ain't seen I should put, I'm going to put that video link below. So y'all, y'all see that video link below. Um, it's called This Is America. And when I watched it, there's a lot of symbolism in it. So the people on YouTube have gone it. They've tried to break this video down and did all this, you know, stuff with this video because the video is kind of deep. Sorry, y'all. I'm plugged to the card and the card keeps making it kind of lean and I'm high up, so it's doing that. Um, but the This is America. Just stay up. Hold on, y'all. There. See if it stays up. Okay. This is, a, the this is America. A video is pretty dang phenomenal. Um, and what he does, he's dealing with a lot of different issues in it. We're in trouble as a country, but what got me, you got everybody voting now. Another thing that got me, what I thought was, uh, it's been coming to me, is that all this has happened for a reason. It was like, I don't know if y'all ever saw the movie Pearl Harbor, and it said you've woken a sleeping giant, okay? Y'all came in here and did all these shenanigans, and y'all done woken a sleeping giant. These people going to come back and that's, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Um, that was probably... I really believe that's what's happening. I believe that there's giants that are being being waken up in women, um, in the African American community, in minority communities. I believe we're being woke up. And I believe we're being woke up because, and you know, I've told you I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian view. Everybody was born with some sort of purpose in this life. That's just, just my view. Some people will walk in it, some will never walk in it. But if you've been asleep to just your own bubble, just it's all about you. It's all about, you know, as I'm going to talk about my father a little bit as an example for have a life outside the truck. Everything in his life was all about him. He didn't really care about having to deal with his children. He didn't. He just wanted to go and sleep on women, uh, look flashy, have a woman tell him he looked sexy, uh, and and he lived in this mindset. But now he's in the fourth quarter of his life, and he's a lonely old man sleeping his way to a casket, sitting in a chair. And and I'm not, you know, God bless him. I pray that something changes where it motivates him. He has no motivation, zero. That is his life. He's, he's, my father's a licensed minister. He, he's not even really going to church anymore. He's just sitting there because he's depressed and he can't do the things that he can do. I saw a man the other day get in a truck with one leg. No freaking lie. Bloomington, Illinois. He's parked in the handicap section next to me. He hopped over to his truck, pulled himself up, one leg. One leg. I met another trucker who was in a wheelchair. We met him inside of the TA in Sparks, Nevada. The petrol. There's no excuse. You, you, you. We're not inhibited. There, there are people who are worse condition than us. There's live until your casket call. Don't just sleep into it. And and right now we have purpose in this country to do things beyond ourselves. If you are stuck and it's just about you and nothing else, there's a problem. I'm not saying that you have to make everything about everybody else, but enjoy life, intermingle with other human beings. It gives you purpose. It, it, you never know what you might say, what you might do, that will encourage somebody to even sometimes be greater than you. And don't be jealous of them be happy for them because if God blessed them through you to get there, that's a blessing and more blessings to come. And if God can do it for them, ain't no tell them what he'll do for me. So, y'all, we got to change it up. We really, really do. I'm listening to all the rhetoric, all the drama. And if you watch me have purpose, you know. Right now, I'm weighing out a lot of things right now. Some things have been put back on the table for corporate America. I don't, I really don't see myself going back there. Depends on what they offer, but I don't see it. It's, it's a financial institution. Um, 
the century level, I'm damn sure not going back. But if they come with the right kind of money and it's it's a position where I ain't got to deal with too many, too much politics, we might be able to talk. I love driving. I really do. But after the whole three-day thing and he went to one company, I might try one more company. But I'm so irritated right now. And uh, bad equipment, you know, I, we, we don't even go to, to have the bull crap going on. You know, it's, it's just I'm old and I'm tired and I'm over it. I talked to Trucker Bill and, and Bill just went through uh, back surgery. He's going back to his company. This brother is 62 years old and about to go OTR um, to make a little bit more money to finish out his retirement because he's in the fourth quarter of his life. One good thing about Bill is Bill, Chucker Bill, you know, he, he does do stuff outside of the truck. He go fishing. He just got a cruise with his wife and some friends. Um, you got to have a life outside of this. I, I, I look at my father and it's the most, I, I, I had to leave the apartment at the time when I'm here because it's just the most depressing life. You know, and I and, and the young lady who did, I'm kind of young, I don't know if Vicky's age is, um, that did the video that inspired us to do Have a Life Outside the Truck. Um, and that link will be below too. Um, man, I, <laughs> all I can do is say, man, I, you know, I, you got to do something different. Y'all don't just be stuck in this and, and have something outside of this truck. Have a goal, have a purpose, make your money right. Because right now I'm, I'm looking at my money. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to do 60 more days. I'm trying to do to the end of the year with these people uh, before I bounce. And honestly, if God opens the door, I'm I'm bouncing. I, I'm bouncing. I was I was really struggling with bouncing, but the more I'm here and the more I'm just like, no, no. You know, I'm on a CPAP machine. You call me about the item. I'm like, I'm on a CPAP machine. And I'm not going to sit out here and freeze or freeze to death and I'm not going to be out here hot as hell neither. You know, you worried about, no, they put put APUs up, or put uh, electric APUs on these trucks. But y'all want to sit here and try to shenanigans. It's, it's all lies. It's all lies. I met a guy who had about five years worth of experience. He used to work for him for this company. He lasted, he said he barely, he didn't even last six months. He said, I came back in because I let my CDL go, brought my CDL back with them. He said, I had to leave. He's over at Dart making way more money. And he said, brand new equipment, better equipment. He said, and not all the bull crap, not all the mild games. You know, it, it's just, and right now, you know, when I came back out, I honestly, I just, after playing that three day thing, I just stopped caring. I honestly, I did. I was tired, one. But two, I just really don't care. It's like, you'll get there safely. I'm going to get there safely. Um, the truck has some issues. If I have to go slower than usual, then that's what I'm going to do. And I'll turn it in when I get to Phoenix. Because I done went to several shops about the same damn thing, and y'all don't want to fix it. So I'm just trying to get through until, the, until my time is up with you, and then and I'll, I'll be over the time. By the time I get home, this go around, I'll have a lot of stuff packed up. Because every night I've been just going through stuff. Put my hands on everything in this truck, and I have a double bag. I'm packing up. And that double bag, I'm going to get this truck down to where I have two double bags off this truck. That'll be headed with me to either Texas or to another truck. Um, that's just how I'm looking at it right now. And I'm trying to decide whether if I can find something local in the city where my dad is at, driving, or, or semi-local, where I'm at least there, you know, weekly. I'll be happy. I'm, I'm, I'm over this. I, I'm over it. Um... Just looking for a good company, someone to treat you different, decent. And I've had an offer to go work for owner op. I'm concerned about working for owner ops, especially new established ones, even though I'm very honored that they asked me. Um, because there's things that are going to come up, maintenance of your truck. I also have to look at health care. It's 1099. Um, and I really didn't want to get into 1099 until I actually had my own truck. Until I'm buying, if I'm doing these purchase and or uh, I just buy a used truck and go from there. But, yeah, so I'm, I'm praying about a lot of stuff right now. I'm just hoping God will open the door. Child, had I hit that lottery, y'all, I'd be retired. Y'all be seeing videos of me going by an RV, looking for land to build my tiny home. Might have a schoolie built. I like the schoolies. I don't know if y'all know what schoolies are. Those are the school buses. They turn into homes. Might have a schoolie built, y'all. Tiny home, schoolie, and be traveling all across the country. That's what that's what the kid would be doing. Give me a couple, give me a copper spaniel, and I think I would get a terrier. I had a dream about 
uh, like a schnauzer. Yeah, those are terriers. I, I, the gray schnauzer. Named, and I named it Cody in the dream. I go get me a Cody and a Cuddles. Cuddles would be the, the, the copper spaniel. Go get me some fishing poles and some cameras. Y'all would be done. And y'all would see me at different RV stops. And I'd probably go do missionary work at different churches helping them out. That's what I would do. Simple. I, I'm not, you know, some people, they want the fancy cars. I, I talk to some of my younger people in my team group here. And they like, oh, man, I don't care about that. I don't care about a Mercedes. I don't care about a BMW. Honestly, for me, an old 57 truck, I'm kind of old school. My my favorite car was a Carmen Ghia, y'all. I ain't going to lie. A VW Carmen Ghia, that was, I actually owned one of those. Yeah, one and two VW Bugs. My fat buck can't get in them now. But in my youth, those were my cars. Cheap, easy to maintain, good on gas. Um, hot as hell in the summer, but hey. That the cars were the bomb. But I love me. The old VW Carmen Y'all can look that up. Um, and then for me, I like old trucks. Like 50-something 50, 50 Chevy or Ford or the old pickup trucks. And uh, old 50, like 7 cars. So I like old cars. I'm, And it's probably because I'm not where I was, I was at. Don't get me wrong. I'm trying to think what new did I like. I liked the Hummer when it first came out. I wouldn't want to. You couldn't pay me that Hummer now. Um, I used to like the Toyota Land Cruisers. Now, I do like them big Toyota diesel uh, Tundra. The Tundras, the big ones are new. I like them. I do like them. I, but that's me. I, I, I'm i not. I'm weird, man. Even like tennis shoes. Fila is my brand. I like old white Fila suits. I do have some colored ones I got from Walmart, but you give me some tennis shoes, take me to Big Five, and give me some Fila's. I always like the Fila tennis shoes. I just like the look of them. Them and K Swiss. So, yeah, um, I'm at a different place right now. I'm weighing a lot of options. Something came to the table. I just don't see myself back in the office, though. I just, I think unless I'm in an office in a room by myself, I don't have to deal with them. But I was like, my best friend, she works one in Florida. Jane, Jane works in a, for pest control, large pest control, large pest control company in Florida. And she does a mail She runs it all by herself. And she said, well, if I had to do with people, other than, I mean, they come to the door, they talk to her, but having somebody that really, she had help in there, and she's like the manager person of the mail room, but it's just really her, and they pair very well, and Jane said, I'm good, she said, I couldn't do, she said, not, not at this age anymore, she's not about a bunch of politics and a bunch of BS, she's just not, and I, y'all know what that means, means right here, we're, we're in alignment. And I just don't. That's why I like trucking. I really do. Sad part is they treat you like crap, and they play all them games, and I just, I just can't anymore, dog. I just can't. Anyway, um, have any other rambles? That's just my rambles. What's today? Sunday, Sunday rambles. Wait for this damn region to get done so I can go, cause there's a storm coming, and I'm, a, I was ahead of the storm, but it's catching up with me, and this region need to hurry his ass up. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, I'm going to upload this, and I'll holler at you, and hopefully this regen will be done here, because I stopped to pee and let the regen go, and it's 40 some 44 minutes of the regen. So let's hope it here, so. Peace. All right. What's up, people? Oh, drop the chair some. Get ready to head out of here. So I did a reset here in Jefferson, Ohio at this TA. Very clean. Uh, if you guys have any kind of issues with like your walking or whatever, they do have a handy bathroom downstairs or handy shower. I did not know that, but all their showers are upstairs, so I ended up going upstairs. And they told me, but it's okay. I need to exercise anyway. Um, I'm gonna show y'all something at the beginning here at this TA. Truckers, y'all, we don't have any courtesy for each other. I mean, just none. This dude just blocked eight trucks in order to go get some Popeyes chicken. Anyway, this is for the 411 trucker, the trucker 411 channel. Um, the video, we, we've been doing videos on uh, different topics. Spilling stuff. This particular topic, um, this particular topic that we're covering this week is basically getting off the truck. Have a life outside of the truck. I'm going to link below the video that kind of inspired me to put this out as a subject to the group, to the team. D-Boy stands did hers. I know Shaz putting his up. Uh, unfortunately, um, DCI Jam still doesn't know how to uh, 
upload to YouTube, but his is on uh, the uh, Facebook, and I always forward him over to the Facebook page too, so if you're a member there, um, you can definitely um, see it there. This one will be forwarded over there as well. Um, did I tie this? I meant to tie this. Um, The video I watched was a lady who I think she's been in trucking. She's been in trucking for a while because she was showing on her channel some really old school stuff. I'm part of a she 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 uh, subbed to my channel and then I ended up uh, subbing to hers and then I you know I always background investigate people and uh, in watching her she showed some really old school things up on the East Coast like where they used to plug the trucks in in the ground. It's kind of cool and um, just things that they used to do. So she's been in the industry for some time. With that being said, this lady, um, she shared how, you know, what am I going to do when I'm not on the truck? And it was really a very, it was a potent video for me. And I say potent not because that's who I am, but I, I have, I know my personality has changed with dealing with this industry, Okay. And Bill told me you will build a uh, you're gonna you're gonna build a, a tough shell, and you're gonna um, toughen up out here. Basically, in essence, you can become a major asshole out here. I'm, I'm just gonna get real down to the wire. And a lot of that has to do with behaviors out here. You have so many different personalities you're dealing with. Also, the treatment that we get in the trucking companies. Um, trying to make a living out here and the sad part is some people enjoy doing this job i actually like doing it doing just the driving but i'll be honest after they played the three-day thing with the company i'm with now i just stopped caring <laughs> i did it it it, it kind of pissed me off and then at the same time my body was exhausted and i realized these people don't give a damn so why do i it's 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 sad to get to that point, but that's what ends up happening, and you end up becoming an a hole in this industry. And then your treatment prior, all the game playing that the trucking companies do to get over on you, whether that's dealing with you on load stuff instead of being upfront with you, they just try to get over like, oh, we need a favor instead of saying, look, we screwed up. You know, we screwed up. We need some help. Can you help us? And we're going to give you extra money to help us because we screwed up. They don't, they don't do that. They just don't do it. And it, it's pretty damn disgusting. Um, so you get fed up and then you have people that burn out of the industry and they burn out the industry because of treated. This happens in corporate America too. Like right now, honestly, I have someone who has said, hey, we got work at a corporate job. Um, asked, they asked me to, would I be interested in it? It's back in a different financial institution. It's weighed on my mind because of all the crap out here. But at the same time, I just I can't go back into it would be in a call center area. I don't know if I have to start an entry level. I, I just thought, ooh, ooh. And even if I started back management, I'm just really struggling with all the politics of that. But dealing with this is, is a whole other ball game too. I didn't hit the lottery, y'all, because I would be so retired and in an RV buying me a property and having a tiny home built. I'm just saying. I bless some folks, but I'd be so retired. Um, with that being said, there's just, it's so much going on and, uh, I'm trying to make some decisions right now. I, I, I like the driver manager I have, but at the same time, they're going through so many changes. I think her hands are tied. She really, you know, she, it is what it is. So I'm going to get my resume and paper out there and see what's available to me. But having a life off this truck is so critical. It's critical in so many areas. And it's funny, it's not only my trucking, it's transportation in general. Because I look at my father now, who in my opinion is a lonely old man. He, you know, we have to be careful. Let me back up. I was listening to Sirius Satellite Radio, Urban Talk. I like Urban Talk. There's a guy named T something King. He's, I think he's a comedian or something like that. And he was talking about the fourth quarter of your life. Uh, you know, comparing it kind of like the football, like, hey, in the fourth quarter, you got to have this, this, and this in order. The problem is, is that we don't live the early part of our years for the fourth quarter because a lot of us haven't been raised to live that for the fourth quarter of our life. Instead, we, we live our life 
in we don't live our life in the correct way. I'm just gonna say that. We just don't. And we end up where the way I want to put this. We end up in situations that we shouldn't be in. We end up, um, I was looking at this man next door to me, he's angry as hell. We end up angry. We end up lonely. Um, you know, my father made choices and decisions. His thing was just sleeping around with different women. Any woman that he slept with, he called his friend. Either they're dead or they ain't around because that's all it was, was sex. It wasn't anything else. Um, so now he has no companion. The only friend he has is one guy. He only has one male friend. He didn't have any men friends in his life. And he's always said, I'm a lone wolf. Well, now he's a lone, lonely wolf. You got to have a life outside this truck, people. I mean, I have associations and I have friends outside of this. I hang with Joe mainly. He's probably my best male friend. My best friend, Jane, she's in Florida. And then I have very good friends, such as my one of my girlfriends, Sinead, who's a flight attendant. Um, I have my friend Bridget, who works for the bank. I used to, one of the banks I used to work for, and we worked in several companies together. So I have associations outside of the truck, and others, and I have family members. And I have, you know, Vivian, Vicky, and Joshua. I don't know if you guys ever met them. Um, we have to make sure that we have those relationships. And though, and we have to get off this truck and go and formulate those relationships so we have something to do in our old days. If you just live your life as a lone wolf out here, you become kind of an asshole. And you become, basically, you put yourself in a weird-ass position, which is exactly what this woman was talking about. She's like, you know, have a life outside of this truck. You you got to have a life because this is all she knows now at her age and at her stage in life. And I don't know what her family and friend affiliation is, but once you get older, you want to have something that you can do. Go to the movies, go out and eat, go have a cocktail, go to church. It, it keeps your normalcy. And like my father, some of his thought process is just totally bizarre. And I sit there and I'm going, you know, he can't move past a lot of stuff and because of some of his immature and I call him grown male because he's not I don't consider him a grown man he's a grown male he never really learned how to be a man other than being able to make money and work he didn't know how to be a father he didn't know how to be a man and only thing that manhood meant to him was screwing a woman and having kids all over the place and now he's a lonely guy you can be like that as a female or male if you don't tend to step back and grow up. You know, it, 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 it takes a lot to do that. But you also have to look, where do I want to be in the fourth quarter of my life? I'm doing this now and I'm starting to, you know, I'm, I'm looking at finances right now. I've got to get the weight off right now because I'm just at the brink of the fourth quarter. I'm 50 years old and at 60, it's, it's pretty much done. I got 10 years to get everything in order. It's done after that. Because my body's not going to be doing what it is. I'm listening to Bill right, Trucker Bill right now. He's had back surgery. He's had uh, some kind of leg issue he had to deal with. 40 plus years in trucking, military. And he's now preparing for retirement. He's getting ready to go regional OTR just to make the last little bit of his money for the next, and he said, maybe five years. Maybe. But he says, after that, I'm done. He says, I'm going to have the rest of everything I need for retirement. Done. He has affiliations with his daughter, his family. Um, you know, he has some, some friends from work. He goes and does things outside of his... My father just sits in the chair and sleeps his way to a casket. Don't work your way to a casket in this industry, and this is all you know, people. It's one of the worst things that you can do. Okay? So, mental health is important. That means building relationships outside this truck. Get out this truck and go... You know, have a cocktail, have dinner with friends, go to church. Have something you do outside of this industry. Don't be my father. And don't be that lady that she's sitting up there. And you'll see the video below. You can click on it. And, and what she said was so poetic. 
if you stay in this truck, you start people start talking to the dog and <laughs> the, the fake stuffed animal and you know have attitude issues like this guy next to me. You become somebody you really don't want to be. This video is not long at all. I'm probably gonna post this up to my channel. I thought about doing a ramble video. I'll probably do a ramble video later. I gotta do a shout out video. But I'll post this up on the Trucker 411 and I might post it to my channel as well. Guys, you be blessed. Um, I'll do a shout out for my channel. I'll also probably do some Trucker 411 shout outs too. Because we got some new people have joined up and some have linked up to me. I think a Nino hit, hit me up on uh, Facebook. Facebook. Nino. Somebody linked to me. Trucker Nino linked up to me on the Facebook. So thank you for linking up to me. Preferably you're safe out here, brother. And you guys just be blessed. Um, Bloomington, Illinois, TA. Phenomenal customer service. That's all I got to say. The shower dude, I forgot his name. Phenomenal customer service. And this one here in Jefferson, Ohio. Very clean. Even the showers. Phenomenal customer service. I even ate at the Country Pride. I had late breakfast. Phenomenal customer service. Anyway, y'all, I'm getting ready to hit, hit it and get on the road. Two and two, I gotta get to Love's and go fuel, and then I'm be at my ship. My load ain't due till tomorrow at ten, but I'm gonna be damn close tonight. If I might even be there at their property. Peace, y'all, because there's a storm coming. <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta giddy up. Peace.